For I received from the Lord what I handed on to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, took bread, and after he had given thanks, broke it and said, This is my body that is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way also the chalice and the supper, saying, This chalice is the new covenant of my blood. Do this in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this chalice, you will claim the death of the Lord until he comes. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Nice to see you all this morning, and thank you all for watching. Today we're celebrating the feast of Our Lady of the Rosary. And uh, the Mass is being offered for Lawrence Driscoll. Any relation, anybody here? Okay, your brother-in-law. What happened to the O? I never saw Lawrence Driscoll before without an O. Okay, Lawrence O. Driscoll. No O? Lost it somewhere along the way. Okay, well anyway, we'll pray for Lawrence Driscoll without the O. And also, we welcome Lisa Ladner to our Mass today. Uh, Lisa's daddy just passed away, so we pray for Billy White. Just got a phone call from Bob Short. Pam has been dying for a couple of weeks and she finally died during the night. So we pray for Pam Short. And Jocelyn Mayfield had Jocelyn's restaurant on the coast here for a long time. She just died. And uh, Father Cuddy is a good friend of mine and his mother was a wonderful lady, Kathleen O'Connell. She lived in County Cork in Ireland and she just died. So with lots of people to pray for as we come to celebrate these sacred mysteries, let us begin by calling to mind our sins. <laughs> I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have made this sin in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most beautiful fault. Therefore, I ask us to marry the Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Please bow your heads and pray in silence for Lawrence Driscoll. Pour forth, we beseech you, O Lord, your grace into our hearts that we to whom the incarnation of Christ your Son was made known by the message of an angel, may through the intercession of the Blessed Virgin Mary, by his passion and cross, be brought to the glory of his resurrection, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from Galatians, chapter 2, verses 1 and 2, and 7 to 14. Brothers and sisters, after 14 years, I again went up to Jerusalem with Barnabas, taking Titus along also. I went up in accord with a revelation, and I presented to them a gospel that I preached to the Gentiles, but privately to those of repute, so that I might not be running or have run in vain. On the contrary, when I saw that they had been entrusted with the gospel to the uncircumcised, just as Peter to the circumcised, to the one who worked in Peter for an apostolate to the circumcised, worked also in me for the Gentiles, and when they recognized the grace bestowed upon me, James and Cephas and John, who were reputed to be pillars, gave me and Barnabas their right hands in partnership that we should go to the Gentiles and they to the circumcised. Only we were to be mindful of the poor, which is the very thing I was eager to do. And when Cephas came to Antioch, I opposed him to his face because he clearly was wrong. For until some people came from James, he used to eat with the Gentiles. But when they came, he began to draw back and separated himself because he was afraid of the circumcised. 
and the rest of the Jews acted hypocritically along with him, with the result that even Barnabas was carried away by their hypocrisy. But when I saw that they were not on the right road, in line with the truth of the gospel, I said to Cephas in front of all, if you, though a Jew, are living like a Gentile and not like a Jew, how can you compel the Gentiles to live like Jews? The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The responsorial psalm is number 117. Go out to all the world and tell the good news. Go out to all the world and tell the good news. Praise the Lord, all you nations. Glorify him, all you peoples. Go out to all the world and tell the good news. For steadfast is his kindness toward us, and the fidelity of the Lord endures forever. Go out to all the world and tell the good news. Hallelujah, hallelujah. through which we cry, Abba, Father. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Jesus was praying in a certain place, and when he had finished, one of his disciples said to him, Lord, teach us to pray just as John taught his disciples. He said to them, When you pray, say, Father, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come. Give us each day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins. For we ourselves forgive everyone in debt to us, and do not subject us to the final test. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. The Feast of the Rosary was introduced in our church in 1571, the Battle of Lepanto, and it really was a significant historical victory for the Christians because, uh, and it was attributed to the praying of the Rosary. At that time, the Pope had ordered all the churches to be left open day and night so people could come and pray and appeal to everybody to pray the Rosary. And the rosary has been a very powerful prayer in the history of the church. I spent uh, four years in Mexico, but there was a time in Mexico when it, it was illegal to have priests. So what, came, what kept the faith alive was the praying of the rosary. When somebody died, when they got married, they celebrated Christmas, whatever, they had the posados, it was all around the rosary. And they had so many beautiful versions of the rosary. It was fantastic, uh, a rosary for every occasion, if you like. And even today, there are so many beautiful versions of the rosary, like uh, the Knights of Columbus do the pro-life rosary sometimes here, it's beautiful. You, you have the patriotic rosary, you have the scriptural rosary, you have the traditional rosary, and different ways to pray the rosary. But the rosary is a very powerful prayer, and it's a great prayer modeled after the Psalter, and it, um, a lot can be said about it. The diocese recently produced four videos on prayer, four YouTube videos, different ways to pray. I would highly recommend it. Just go to the Biloxi Diocese. Uh, dot org and uh, look up the four videos. It doesn't take long to watch them, but they're very informative and it might give you um, uh, just a different idea on how to pray, especially if you find prayer boring or difficult. It's good to experiment with different ways of praying so it can give you like a new enthusiasm for prayer and draw you closer to God. So the rosary is a great prayer, but pray, experiment with it, do it in different ways so that you, you know how beautiful it can be. And uh, the gospel today is about prayer. Jesus was constantly at prayer, and his disciples asked him how to pray, and he gave us the Our Father. And it's interesting, we have two versions of the Our Father in the, in the gospel, one in Matthew and one in Luke, and the one we say at church is the one in Matthew. And it's very interesting, a couple of weeks ago I was blessing a marriage, and the, the witnesses for the marriage were uh, not Catholic, they're Methodist. And afterwards, we went out to eat and were asked me, why the difference between the Catholic ending to the Our Father and the Protestant ending? 
And I said, well, it's interesting. The Catholics do the one out of the Bible, and the Protestants do the old Catholic one from the Didache. And the early Christians added doxologies to everything. And when, uh, when Elizabeth I was around, she just wanted to be different than Catholics. So that's why they started with the doxology. That's why they went back to the old Catholic one. I'm sure she didn't know that at the time, but, but, but it's interesting that the Protestants prayed the old Catholic one, and we pray the one from the Bible. I wish we could all agree on one prayer, the Our Father, but anyway, it is what it is, and, and, and it's historical, uh, the reasons, but anyway, uh, I'm glad we have the Our Father. It's a beautiful prayer to pray, and we should pray it regularly. Doesn't matter whether you use Luke's version or Matthew's version. Amen? Amen. So now let us pray. Let us pray that this beautiful weather we're having will continue and that God will keep us safe from all hurricanes. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pray for all the recently deceased. May they know God's mercy and may he welcome them to eternal life. We pray especially for Lisa and Daddy and Billy White, Jocelyn Mayfield who cooked for so many over the years of great work in the restaurant. For Pam Short, who is a parishioner and a great woman, her husband used to be the mayor of Gunport. Um, also, we pray for Father Cuddy's mother. Uh, she's back in Ireland, and may she enjoy perfect happiness in heaven. And we pray for uh, Lawrence Driscoll, for whom the Mass has been offered. We pray to the Lord. Lord and all over the world, there seems to be an upsurge in this coronavirus. We pray that we can find a vaccine, find a cure for this coronavirus, so that things can get back to normal. We pray to the Lord. Lord and sicknesses like cancer, Parkinson's, Crohn's disease, we pray they can find cures for these terrible human scourges. We pray to the Lord. Lord for God's guidance and direction in all that we say and do, we pray to the Lord. Lord for all of us Christians, that we truly appreciate the, vit the victory of Lepanto and thank God for the power of the rosary and pray it often. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Almighty God, we thank you for this day. May we pray this day and draw closer to God through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Through the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual thread. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands for the praise and glory of His name, for our good and good of all the Holy Church. Grant, we pray, O Lord, that we may be rightly conformed. To, those, to these offerings we bring, and so honor the mysteries of your only begotten Son, as to be made worthy of his promises, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, and to praise, bless, and glorify your name on the feast day of Our Lady of the Rosary. For by the overshadowing of the Holy Spirit, she conceived your only begotten Son, and without losing the glory of virginity, brought forth into the world the eternal light, Jesus Christ our Lord. Through him the angels praise your majesty. Dominions adore and powers tremble before you. Heaven and the virtues of heaven and blessed seraphim worship together with exaltation. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in humble prayers as we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of holy glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed be he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest.
Today we'll pray the third Eucharistic prayer and a quote from the Didache from the year 90. On the Lord's day, gather together, break bread and give thanks after confessing your transgressions so that your sacrifice may be pure. May no one who has a quarrel with his neighbor join you until he is reconciled by the Lord. In every place and time, let there be offered to me a clean sacrifice, for I am a great king, says the Lord. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy, and you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory. The mystery of faith. Therefore, Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, in which we show forth it. Look with favor upon the oblation of your church. And recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to your son, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your life, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph as vows, with the blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints and whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis our Pope, Louis our Bishop, the Order Bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you, in your compassionate, merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world, to our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom, there we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, through Christ our Lord, to whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, our glory and honor is yours, forever and ever. Amen, amen, amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity, in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and 
ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Mindful of the coronavirus, let's offer each other a sign of Christ's peace. Lamb of God, you take, take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Grant us peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who take, takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy to be the end of my life, but I will say the word that my soul shall be healed. May the body and blood of Christ keep us safe for eternity. Amen. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. We pray, O Lord our God, that just as we proclaim in this sacrament the death and resurrection of your Son, we being made partakers of his suffering, we may also merit a share in his consolation and his glory, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated now for 10. Good morning. Good morning. Don't you love the fact that Jesus picked Peter as leader of our church? Uh, you know, we see that all of the human frailty desire to be part of the crowd uh, I mean he's he's leaning up to the to the Jews and kind of um, staying away from the, the Gentiles in this first reading <clears throat> and and here comes Paul now Paul just says what it is you know I, I, he's probably one of those guys if it comes here it goes there <laughs> so he walks up and says hey what are you doing you know, you're you're supposed to be living like the Gentiles now, uh, because we're not we're not Jews now, we're Christians, and uh, so he he lets them have it, <clears throat> and and then uh, I'm I'm sure that Peter went away and said, well, there I go again, man, you know, because uh, he's human, and Jesus picked someone that was very human, so it kind of gives me hope. That the millions of times a day I mess up, Jesus is sitting there going, Well, you're no Peter, but you know, we'll, we'll let you go. <laughs> and then in the responsorial psalm, this is another example that in the in the Old Testament in the Psalms, they were already trying to expand the the God, you know, God's influence, um, and of course from the Jewish perspective, out to the rest of the world. So this is another example that it was always there, was always meant, because God knew what was coming. And then when Jesus, uh, and Jesus is, uh, is so radical in so many ways, he's talking to these guys that were his followers, and uh, they were Jews. So what was the law that they followed? You know, there's 613, I think, different rules. To try to help you stay in compliance with the Ten Commandments. <laughs> One of them was an eye for an eye. And, and Jesus says, uh, well, no. I'm going to ask God to forgive you the way other people, the way you forgive other people. Now, that doesn't follow an eye for an eye. That's way different than that. So Jesus, once again, is radical in his love for all of us. And those are my thoughts. Very good, Tim. Thank you. And I got a cute email here. When Albert Einstein and Charlie Chaplin met, Albert Einstein said, What I admire most about your art is its universality. You do not say a word, and yet the world understands you. And Charlie Chaplin said back to Albert Einstein, It's true, but your fame is even greater. 
The world admires you, but nobody understands you. <laughs> the Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you all for coming this morning. Thank you for watching. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Amen. Let us pray together the prayer to the Holy Spirit. Come, Holy Spirit. And in the name of the fire of your love. Let us pray, O oh God. God.